Before I begin today's video, I would like to thank HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. You guys can use my unique code right here or click the link in the description below. Other than that, enjoy the vlog. <laughs> What's up? So I'm out here in New York, my boy K. You say your name Kmar? Yeah, Kmar. Kmar. Yeah. All right, yeah. Out here with Kmar, about to do a photo shoot. Uh, rented out a studio right here. It's real nice. Um, got a couple of lights, backdrops, furniture set. So yeah, man, it's gonna be real dope. I'll uh, show you guys some behind the scenes. What are you doing over here, bro? <laughs> <laughs> Amazing photos right now. Go for it. How was the shoot, bro? <laughs> yeah, it was good. Uh, a lot of photos, like, they're different than what I usually shoot. Um, it's like this whole studio kind of looks like a house. And so we got a lot of dope like photos and I feel like we can make a series out of them. That's like kind of like build like a story. Um, we took some Charlotte's pictures over here with a black backdrop. Uh, we got a nice like, living room set that looked pretty dope. And uh, I'm excited for it, man. It's so why is this different from your normal shoots? Is it the uh, home setup? Yeah, I think it's home the set. home setup. Home setup? Like, it's like the, like the production, like the, the gotcha. set. It's definitely different. Fuck, fuck, fuck. You never done, sorry, my bad, my bad. You never done like a home type of settings. Yeah. Really? Yeah, like, like I never done like home set, like shoot. Like really? this is my first time like doing a shoot like on a couch or like. Really, what the, why do I feel like I've seen it on your page, but now I mentioned like you mentioned it, I see like the beach ones or maybe you're outside mm -hmm. or background. Yeah. But this has been the first. Really? I always see it on Instagram. Like, I always yeah. see it on Instagram where they do, like, the guys doing, like, the at home with the I wife know. beater. And... I know, exactly. What yeah. the hell? And that's what it reminded me of, too. Like, when I, like, see the photos and stuff, I'm like, oh, yeah, this would definitely be in, like, one of these like, <laughs> magazines. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right. Here you go. Still Sweet. rolling. Thank you, bro. Maybe you can show off, like, the shit here. Yeah. Nah, you good. I curse in my videos all the time. Yeah. What's good, y'all? I just um, I just went to the mall real quick just to waste some time and shit. Um, and it's parking garage. That's why it's so like dark out. I'm trying to light this up for you guys, but I do have to be at this place at like four o'clock, right? Um, and it's just some casting for New York Fashion Week uh, for just like a runway show. Like this time around, like especially uh, I did like New York Fashion Week like in uh, September, right? And just felt like I just couldn't do anything that week. Like my whole day was just like booked, um, which is like, you know, a good problem. I'm not, well, I am complaining about it, but it's just that like I told myself like, I don't want to do that shit again, like coming this February, but uh, there is one. So hopefully I'm just going to be in like one show um, and that would be nice and not like a whole week of like, you know, doing these runway shows. Pretty much just try to just seek out every opportunity that comes to me. Um, I was talking to uh, Kmart, a photographer, uh, on past shoot. It's just like, we talked about a lot of shit, actually. Uh, I don't even know where to start. Um, but it's uh, when it comes to like vacation, right? You know, going to a different city and stuff like that. Man, this shit, when I travel to a different state, nigga, it's a mission. <laughs> I treat this shit like a motherfucking war, like this another battlefield. 
like there is no rest like it's just like it's just a different setting for me like to do the same shit and to connect with new people and just complete the mission that's it bro just complete the mission you know we got an objective all it is bro is like you know all i gotta say is like don't set your expectations like mad high and because all that's going to do is just like set you up for disappointment right so like if my drone is just like oh i want to be scouted by like uh like some crazy like fashion designer like some high fashion designer like you know uh when i go to these places like that's really unrealistic you know what i mean um what i expect for myself when i come back to va when i come back home is just that i increased my odds like i made my odds better that's all i gotta say and the only way to make your odds better is to keep going to every yeah beep at that motherfucker only way to increase your odds right is just to go to every opportunity that presents itself to you you know what is up you guys i am pretty much done with my day um i got up today at like 6 a.m um i'm staying at my uncle's house in jersey i've just been driving to the city um you know like for opportunities or jobs going there and um today was like a really interesting day man um and i just figured like i share it with you guys and i know like um you know I can't bring my camera there like to cast things and stuff that's just like what you know like um so you know there's gonna be like a lot of these like sit down talks gonna be like in the car and stuff um just because like I just got back uh, to my uncle's place um so man uh so you guys already know I did a photo shoot at like 10 a.m then I got out and then we had this casting at three, right? Or, you know, I had this casting at three. I just really had like a strong, valid excuse today to be like, nah, I'm good. I'm gonna just go home and eat and pack up for tomorrow. Um, supposed to be doing a B&H event tomorrow. So we gonna do that shit, man. We gonna do that shit. And uh, I'll try to get, I'll try to get footage for you guys, but I'm not sure. But I'm getting off track. Um, so, dude, it was like, I wasted some time because Foshi was over at like 12 p.m., like noon time, and then went to the store and shit. You know, like I wasted pretty much just like three hours of just like thinking to myself, like, hmm, what should I do? What should I do? I don't want to do it. But then I would just like, nah, bro. Every opportunity that comes to you, take it um i think maybe i might have said this before but like i literally just realized in the pursuit of happiness like what the scene meant when uh will smith's son um was walking with him in the street with his action figure and he was like um dad i got a joke to tell you and he just like what is it you know and he was like there was a man lost at sea and the man prayed to God that he would come and save him. So uh, a boat came by and a boat said, hey, do you need any help? And the man said, no, thank you. God will save me. And then another boat came by. He said, you know, do you need any help? He said, no, thank you. God will save me. And then, you know, third boat came around, you know, and he was just like, no, thank you. God will save me. And then the man died and went up to heaven. And the man asked God, he was like, hey, God, I prayed to you. Why didn't you save me? And God said, I sent you beat. I've sent you. I sent you three big boats, you dummy. And I didn't realize, like, you know, I was just like, OK, it's just a little kid's joke, you know. But like, think about the pursuit of happiness and how much chris gardner was going through shit like how much shit he was doing like without pay and like how his bank account was just like you know he was broke like he didn't have anything in his bank account and he was still trying to pursue this thing 
um, not making any money, like doing a lot of free stuff, like you know, like at, like his his mindset wasn't like you know, like uh, like when he was going in for the interview or when he was going to this or to that, he wasn't just like, am I gonna get paid? Am I gonna get paid? And it was just like he was doing this like because like this is almost like a rite of passage almost and uh with modeling you'll notice that like opportunities do mean a lot you know like um the, these like free things it's it's really is just like somebody can see you it only takes one person um and just like opportunities there are opportunities everywhere and you know and, and that's what convinced me like yo like all right fine fine you know I'll go, like, like I'ma go, I'ma go. I'ma hate it, but I'ma go. Like, I was dragging myself like a little kid, you know? Um, and I got to, got to the building, you know? It was like 3 p.m. and the line was like out the damn building. And I was just like, and it's like 30 degrees out. Like, it's winter, it's, it's in New York, it's winter time. And you know, I got on this tank top and I just got this jacket over it. Um, so I'm just like, man, I'm about to leave, you know? I'm over here like, man, max, max 15 minutes, bro, if I'm not in that building. And this dude came up to me and, you know, he gave me a fist bump. And, you know, I gave him a fist bump too. I was just like, yo, what's up? And he, he, he like, looked surprised, like, you know, like, I didn't recognize him. He just like, you don't, you don't recognize me? Like, I, uh, I messaged you on Instagram. Like, I'm one of your fans. Like, I, I follow your YouTube channel, um, Pretty Boy Floyd. And you know, I I get a lot of messages. So like, if I don't remember your name, like don't take it personal. You know what I'm saying? I try to, you know, um, be that way, but you definitely gotta ring a bell with that. Like with Instagram, especially if I don't like know a name to a face or like if I haven't seen you uh, like in person, like it's just, really hard for me like to recognize like that's you so uh i did feel bad about that like at first and i was like oh damn like nah i gotta be better with that like i gotta know like my fans like way better and like the people that support me like way better like that and um it was pretty cool man because like you know we, we was chatting up and um you know i got to know him and stuff and um you know i do remember like messaging him like back and forth like about the modeling thing and like um you know encouraging him like to keep on going and to push and to, you know keep doing that and it's just crazy that like we end up in the same place like we're at the same like casting so that's just crazy and then you know and then also in the back of my head i'm like man if i leave like i can't do that to like somebody who like looks up to me or like somebody who is supporting me right now and somebody that like i help out like what do i look like you know so i just like all right all right i'll endure it so we finally get inside the building right and about an hour has passed and i told myself i'm like Ooh, it's cold in this building like there ain't no heat bro i'm about to leave bro like screw this shit like man i'm about to leave and you know they're starting to call out like everybody's names and there's hella people that are in there and basically just calling your names like to go downstairs and like walk and stuff and then it's like all right you know i'm about to leave i'm about to leave at like 4 30 i'm about to leave at like 4 30 then 4 15 come around and they call my name and so like i walk up and you know they line us up and then all I hear is, like, what did he say? He, he was like, uh, well, 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 look who it is, pretty boy Floyd. I was just like, huh, wait, what? He was like, I'm about to, they got me out here with pretty boy Floyd, man, a legend. I was just like, what the hell? I was just like, wait, wait, how do you know me? Like, wait, do you know me? Like, it, like I said, bro, like, I'm from Virginia. And then like, I come up here like to New York and I'm like, whoa, like, and it's just, it's my, to me, it is mind blowing. Um, you know, anybody who knows me and you know, guys who, you know, who watch me a lot know like, yo, like I was like the quiet kid. I'm like, you know, I don't talk like that. You know what I'm saying? So like for like people like to approach me, like I'm a, like a celebrity or like, you know, like I'm a, like I'm a big time, like YouTuber, like the shit is just, it's unreal, you know? 
and me and him you know we was chopping it up and stuff like that and um you know just having like a real good conversation like you know like like the cold and shit like i was shivering and stuff but it didn't seem that bad because you know i was talking to somebody and talking to somebody who who knows me and who watches my videos and who was a fan of like my work I'm, and you know he was just telling me like you know like to just basically like encouraging me like to keep on going and just telling me like yo like you've done like a lot like you're recognizable like by somebody and you know um he was um i don't want to say these people's name wrong but uh it was darius and it was Medi. i think that's how you say his name darius and Medi. Uh, Darius was the first guy that um, approached me and was just like, what's up? And then Medi was the second guy who was just like, well, 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 it's pretty boy Floyd. <laughs> and that shit was so like comedic to me because it was just like, oh shit, he got me out here like, <laughs> like, hey, god damn, I don't know. That shit was just funny. But uh, yeah, bro, like we was chopping it up and um, had like a real good conversation and stuff. Um, and you know it the reason why it is so like an artist the one thing that feels like like the best thing on earth like for an artist is like yo somebody appreciates my work but the type of work that i do it provides value to somebody and it's of service to somebody and it helps somebody out like through dark times and and one of the things about being a youtuber and one of the reasons why i watch youtubers and why i watch my favorite youtubers is because like oh shit he's human too like he's gone through the same shit that i've gone through and he's articulating it in a way that either I never thought about or like I feel the same way but he's like saying it and you just build this sense of camaraderie like between one another and it's just like to actually like meet one of you guys is just insane like it is just like you know you look at my channel like 40,000 subscribers just like just meeting one of them it's just like that's a whole life like and it is just like having that human connection just being like yo i've impacted somebody like you know <laughs> like i've impacted somebody and you know that's not something that you think about on a daily basis but like when that shit pops up it's just the universe giving you green lights and you know i've talked about this before and it's just like if you go through one green light then you go through all of the green lights like they set it up in a way in a successful succession and if you go through one green light you go through all of them and sometimes the universe keeps on giving you green lights to keep on going and one of those times that like the universe gives you green lights is that like he will like they will send strangers or like people who have been watching you just to be like yo i see you going like keep on going and it's just you gotta read that book green lights by matthew mcconaughey man it's it's a great book but um just just that bro like that that shit made my day like you don't realize like that shit made my day like like i can't tell you like how much that made my day like just being like an artist and just like just somebody like appreciates like all this work that you've been putting in you know it like it's amazing and then like uh he's actually like signed to like Wilhelmina models like up in New York too so like he's like uh you know like a model that like is like up there you know like with one of the biggest agencies like in the country so that was just dope um it was just like a dope experience bro um basically you know it was a cash thing we just walked i haven't got a call back yet i don't know if i will like i said um you know good with it no biggie you know in this industry don't take anything personal you know what i'm saying uh if you get a no it's not never it's just not right now uh that that's all that means you, you'll you will realize like the people that are telling you no start to circle back around and act like shit ain't never happened <laughs> and then be like you know start being like hey well uh i got this thing that i think you'll be great for it 
just <laughs> you know, it shit always happens. Hey, it's business, right? That's how that's how they carry it out, man. Like things are just business around here. Um well, it's just a whole different topic. But I just figured I'd share that with you guys. Um today was a pretty good day just because of that. Like literally just because of that. Like you guys don't understand, like just if y'all come up to me and like talk to me, like I'm just like whoa <laughs> you know because like even right now like like bro like look around right i'm in my car by myself recording on a camera that's like gonna go on the internet and like people are gonna like see but like i'm not i don't know that like i'm literally in my car and this hasn't been uploaded yet so like i'm literally in my car talking to myself telling you guys about my day telling you how grateful i am and um just yeah and like i'm doing this out of like a heart space of like love to to provide value for you guys and again like i'm sharing an experience with you um just because if you are on the same path as me as like somebody who um is on a self-proven and wants to help out other men and you know other women or other people like this is just like like there's gonna be like some similarities between our paths you know um but yeah <laughs> uh i must stop talking so much because it is eight o'clock right now and i need to pack up for tomorrow because i need to get up at 4 a.m and just as i told uh Medi at the cast and i was just like the night shift guy has to do stuff for the morning shift guy so yeah see so, yeah, i i gotta get stuff ready for the morning shift guy uh, I can't slack off on that. Can y'all hear me? Uh, no, I was wheezing a little bit. I got asthma. <laughs> uh, y'all got me talking too much. All right, peace. Whoa, what's up, y'all? Uh, about to get this photo shoot in. Um, it's in Brooklyn right now. Rented out a studio. Uh, I'll try to get some behind the scenes for you guys. Uh, see how you boy. Hey, I like this light. That shit. Hey, that look, I'm, I'm just relaxing right now. That's crazy. All right, all right, all right. Basically, dog, I can't even, it's so hard to vlog. I've been trying to vlog, but honestly, I already knew like I had to have one of these segments where like I sit down, I catch you guys up. Long story short, um, I did this, event for B and H photo which was a great great gig for a big company. Um accomplished that is down set of books. Um I am beyond grateful like for that gig. I like I think I've like told you guys this shit before but it's just like yo like when you have those moments of just being like oh man I'm about to give up like uh it's like you're about to have like a breakthrough or something big is about to happen dog so like something like that i was not expecting um crazy like you know i i've got my lighting equipment from that photo store like it's it's the biggest like photography store if you're a photographer or in a youtuber anything like photography related you've heard of being h photo um so like to have that under my belt is just like amazing um but after the first day, right, I drove my car here. So I parked on the street, right? Right next to the parking meter, right? I pulled up the parking app, right? Jones said, payment not required, right? I said, oh, okay, cool. Left it there, did my, my, did my thing, b &H photo, came back, that bitch was towed. Dog. What? And then like you're calling them up, they're talking about, oh, it, you know, it was illegally parked or this or that. And I'm trying to like send them like screenshots and all the other stuff. They're not trying to hear it. Whatever. You take it to the chin, you take that L and you just say, all right, whatever, fine. You know, blah, blah, blah. Cost me $300, $300 to get my fucking car back, dog. And mind you, the event was over at like four, like 4 p.m. And both days, like I had to get up at 4 a.m. Like, you know, like just to get ready and go into the city and, you know, do all that. For now, I've been staying at my uncle's house in Jersey. So, honestly, it takes me about an hour and a half to two hours to get to the city, like by transit. 
which it doesn't feel that long, especially because like you're moving and walking and stuff. And you know, I just plug in like a damn podcast and audio book. So everything's all good. So $300 to get my car back, had to go to the tow pound, which I had to call a fucking Uber to get it because how the fuck it get towed in Manhattan, but you tow it all the way to Brooklyn. It's ridiculous. Like, like some shit is just like, like these niggas just want to piss you off because like, why couldn't it just be like towed in Manhattan? Like you took somebody's car, you know what I'm saying? Like, how are you going to get there? But anyways, um, Two days after that, right? Found a barber shop, got my hair cut, uh, went to the gym. You guys probably gonna think like, yo, like I probably got my hair like fucked up or whatever. But no, they did like a really good job. A video is gonna come out about like how to like go to a barber shop in a new area and not get your hair fucked up. But I digress. After I got my hair cut, I'm like, you know, all right, bet I'm gonna get my car washed. So. Um, I'm at the stoplight, you know what I'm saying, light turns green, go out, you know what I'm saying, about to, you know, make a left turn, and this bitch, this bitch, goes on the opposite side of the road, cuts in front of me, and hits my fucking car. I just got this car, bro, I just got this car, like, literally two, three weeks ago, like, and she fucked it up. The headlights are smashed in. Um, she fucked up my tires. I can't even open up my trunk. Um, anyways, called up, you know, my insurance company. Um, fucking, uh, you know, they said it was her fault. So, like, you know, everything's, like, being paid for by her or whatever. So, that's all good. But it was just, like, I'm not driving my fucking car up here anymore. Um... And it's just because, like, I'm staying at my uncle's house, and he lives in Jersey, so, like, y like, you kind of need a car, like, in Jersey. In New York, I'm flying in, like, I'm not driving, but, like, you know, since I was staying with them, like, you know, I have to drive to the grocery store, go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. But when I'm in New York, man, like, I wouldn't even think about, like, bringing my car up here because, like, I just take the transit everywhere. You know, simple, it's cheap. I'm good with that, but New Jersey is just a different ballgame. Um, anyways, uh, he's here now, so let me go ahead and do that.